if you want to stop dating imposters, stop being one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is the title. That is what we're going to focus on today. Um, I'm very glad to have all of you guys uh, today and this evening, and whoever wants to see it later, because it's going to be sitting on our website, uh, www.option.org. So, uh, what are we going to talk about? All right, first of all, this is this subject I have a sort of limitless fascination with. One, because I've had so much of my own experiences. Uh, and two, because we are inundated, just completely inundated, with all of the different messages and books and movies that basically tell us how to date an imposter. How, and it's great. It's, it's the perfect message. Just, if you want to date an imposter, be one. And that is the message over and over and over again. Uh, so many of the books. I mean, we have best-selling books like uh, The Rules, book written by women for women about how to get the guy and keep him interested. There's a, a book called The Game, written by a guy, for guys, about basically how to pick up any woman in a bar and get her to be really interested in you. Uh, there's, there's a book uh, even, uh, Why Men Marry Bleep. I don't want to swear on that internet thing, but uh, it's, it's the B word that sometimes refers to women. The book is actually written by women, uh, saying why men date the B word. So there's all this, there's all this stuff. And then there's, of course, there's the movies, right? All the, all the different movies and all the lines, all the lines and all the, in all the top ten hits, right? And it's, it's amazing all that we hear. Personally, one of my favorite ones, uh, one of my favorite lines is the, um, the whole interchange at the end of Jerry Maguire, for those of you who've seen that. You know, Tom Cruise, Renee Zellweger. You know, it was a real career maker movie for a lot of people. Um, actually, I really enjoyed the movie. Let me just say, it's a fun, entertaining movie. But as far as messages about how to create the relationship of your dreams based on mutual honesty, not so much, you know? Uh, it was uh, obviously my, my favorite part in that in terms of teaching people how to date imposters by being them. And in terms of providing um, providing the the intellectual, philosophical, and emotional backbone for why we would even bother being an imposter and dating an imposter. Because you would think, why would people want to do that? But a lot of us want to do it, and we have good reasons for wanting to do it. And some of the reason is encapsulated in that little interchange in the end, which is, you know, where Tom Cruise has been separated from Renee, and he finally realizes he wants to be with her, and he can't live without her. So he bursts in the door, and she's in talking with a bunch of other women, and he says, I'm not letting you get away from me that easily. How do you like that? You know, it's... You... Complete... Me. And then she goes, <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. You had me at hello. You had me at hello. Now, nothing wrong with I had, you had me at hello. i got to respect that. But the whole you complete me thing creates some issues, creates some problems. Because, like I said, it, it's the whole underpinning of why we would be an imposter to then date an imposter. Why we would not be ourselves as we're wanting to create the relationship that we claim is the relationship of our dreams. And by the way, if you're listening, this is true if you're single right now, if you're in uh, a, a newer relationship, or if you're really trying to make the relationship you're in, creating that relationship that's really going to be satisfying and fulfilling for you, which, which you know, so many of us want that. So many of us are looking for that. And that's great. There's no reason why we shouldn't want to want that and look for that. But there's this issue, right? There's this issue of why is it that we date someone, we get together with them, and six months later, and, and again, I'm saying six months, it could be six years, it could be a year, it could be a year and a half later. It's For some people, even in all seriousness, it's ten years later. Uh, for a lot of people, it's six months to a year later. Uh, and that is, six months to a year later, what happens is, this person who there was so much heat and interpersonal connection and so much excitement, maybe on both sides, now all of a sudden you're realizing, what's up with this? This, this, this person I was so excited about isn't for me. Maybe it's because, you know, they, they really had not the personality I'm looking for. Maybe they don't want to share in the way that I want to share. Maybe they don't really like the things that I like. Maybe they don't really like me that much. Right? All of those things 
But why is it that we find this out in month 6, or month 12, or month 24? Why is that? Right? And, and it's, we, you know, I, I can't tell you how many people I do uh, dialogues with. Uh, and by dialogues, I mean uh, the option process dialogue. For those of you who are new to this, it's a one-on-one, very, very powerful counseling system based on a system of non-directive and very non-judgmental questions that enables people to uncover the beliefs behind what they're feeling and what they're doing so that they can change their beliefs and thus really change how they're feeling and what they're doing. Anyway, I do countless dialogues with people who have said, you know, they, they rail against these people who they've dated. How, how could this person do that? They manipulated me. You know, they, they, uh, I thought they were this one person, and now they're this other person. What's going on with that? I, I, you know, in all sincerity, I came to the relationship, and I wanted this type of person, and, and they turned out six months later not to be this type. And this happens to a lot of us. It's happened to me. But the thing is, even though a lot of us have experienced this, what we don't always get is that we are a key player in making this happen. We're a key player in making this happen. Yeah, of course the other person's deciding what they're deciding. We're not God. We can't control what they're thinking. But here's the thing. Why is it that we spend so much time and so much effort to make a good impression, to, to say the right thing, to be the kind of person that this other person is going to like and be attracted to? Right? Why is that? Why do these books that are bestsellers, those books I quoted to you, they are all bestsellers, all three of them, best-selling books. Okay? So obviously there's a craving for this. But, but why is there? These books are basically selling how to, uh, how to be inauthentic and manipulative to do and say the right thing so that someone else will either like you or stay interested in you. Now, now what's that about? Why is that? Why are we so, why are we so in, into that? First of all, we date imposters because we are imposters in so many different ways, especially as we're starting a relationship or even as we're starting what we think could become a relationship. And now, when I said at first that Jerry Maguire line, that you complete me line, the connection here is we are looking, in many cases, for someone to complete us which means we feel needy, right? If you need someone to complete you, it means you ain't whole on your own, right? If you're not whole on your own, you are going down this road from the very beginning, this road of needing to impress the person, needing to get the person interested and keep the person interested. Because, hey, you've got to do it. You've got to do it to complete yourself, to stay whole, to be content, to be comfortable, to fill your cup, Right? But the thing is, is your cup was never empty. Right? This, is, this is a mindset we've been taught to believe of find your other half. I, I even talked to a lot of married couples who says, oh, you know what, I'm not sure whether we're going to be free that night. Go talk to my other half. My other half. What does that mean? That means I'm half a dude. Right? If I'm half a dude, I want to be a whole dude. How do I be a whole person? I'm a whole person by finding this other person to complete me. So, now we've set ourselves up for a very particular kind of life and a very particular kind of dating and relationship experience. Because now we're needy. And if we're needy, of course we're going to say and do things to try and impress the other person. Of course we're going to feel insecure and uncomfortable at times. Of course we're going to do whatever we think we need to do to get this person and keep this person interested. Of course we are. It's actually nothing to beat ourselves up about. And I understand that we're all doing that at different points. But it's key to understand that we do this because we feel like we are not complete as we are and we're trying to complete ourselves with somebody else. So that if, if we hold on to that, we're never going to break out of this. You can, we can talk, have this conversation all day about how to go down a different road and not date imposters by not being one. But it doesn't really matter because we're still going to be imposters. We're still going to be fakers. We're still going to be liars, is the truth of it, if we need someone else to complete us. So we got to start from this position, this position of deep security, deep comfort with who we are, deep uh, sense of completeness, with it, even if we never find anyone. doesn't mean we don't want someone. doesn't mean it's not a huge priority, maybe, for some of us to get someone, who, to have a long-term, meaningful relationship with someone. But that doesn't mean we need them to be complete. So... 
If we feel like we need someone to complete, be, complete us, we're going to be needy. If we don't, that opens up all kinds of doors, which has to do with how we talk to ourselves, how we see ourselves. Do, do you see yourself as, as good enough? Do you see yourself as um, useful enough in the world? Do you see yourself as a funny, exciting, engaging person, regardless of whether you're in a relationship or not? See, a lot of us actually look through this particular lens to evaluate ourselves. And the lens that we are looking through is actually uh, almost like we're endeavoring to look through the other person's eyes to see ourselves. Now, of course, we can't really do this. You can't really look through someone else's eyes because you can't read their minds. But we sort of imagine that we can. So we then, when someone else looks at us, someone we're dating, someone we want to date, and they say we're attractive, they act like we're attractive, hey, we, we feel good, we feel attractive. We feel handsome, we feel gorgeous, we feel good looking, right? We feel funny, we feel like we have personality and pizzazz and we're interesting. All of that because we think someone else who we deem to be attractive thinks that. Right? And that is so, so important. So important to sort of own that and realize that. Because if we're trying to convince ourselves that we're attractive and exciting and uh, fascinating and meaningful as a person, and we're trying to convince ourselves with that by checking with these other people, once again, we're going to be imposters and we're going to date imposters. We are. We're going to be. And again, listen, there's nothing, um, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing inappropriate about that. Uh, there's nothing that you should, anyone should feel ashamed of about that. But we want to ask ourselves what we want, right? And again, I hear so many people complaining about dating imposters, dating people who they find out later it's not the real person. So if we want to have a new kind of experience for ourselves, uh, that's going to that's gonna be what might lead us to start to reconsider this stuff, start to think differently about this stuff. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's so interesting. i got to tell you, it's so interesting because all of what we've learned about what romance is is based on this idea of insecurity and incompleteness. Right? There's lines in songs, you're nobody till somebody loves you. That's actually a line of a Steve Winwood song. I'm not making that up. I'm not exaggerating that. Right? We have these lines that we now look that, that we now sort of see love through uh, from all these songs and movies and, 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 and even lots of times our parents and our friends and different things. So we, we take in these beliefs from different people and, and, and media outlets in the world and then we use that as a way of seeing what love is. Right? How, how many times have you heard, let's be honest, come on, how many times have you heard, well, I know I really love him because of how bad I feel when I'm away from him. God, I know I, I know I really loved her because of how terrible I felt when we broke up. I mean, that's what, that's what was the kicker for me. Right? So we have all of these, you know what that means, right? That means, check this out, this is how insane this is, that misery is our measure of love. Okay? Do you get the psychosis there? Misery is actually a measure of love. Now, I know when I say it that starkly, you might say, well, that's not what I believe. But if you believe that you can tell how much you love someone by how upset you feel when they're gone or when they don't love you anymore, when they break up with you, you are measuring your love in units of misery. Okay? Think about that. I gotta tell you, I, I mean, this is this is a paradigm that's gonna take some breaking out of, right? Lord knows, I've been in relationships where I've actually had women who I've been with in the past get sincerely angry at me and really upset with me because I didn't act upset enough when I either wasn't gonna see them or when um, there was a chance of us breaking up or anything like that. And, and when I always say it, you know, it doesn't always work. They don't always agree with me, but, you know, because they don't always agree with that philosophy. But what I always say is, listen, I do love you. I do care about you. I don't show how much I love you and care about you by how miserable I feel when you're not returning my love or when you're away from me. That's not, that's not how I show it. That's not how I want to show it. Right? Now, that doesn't magically cure everything. And now, oh, the, the, whoever I was dating feels great about it. But actually, it gives me a really good um, a guidance system and a screening system 
to help me and to help all of us to make to make a decision about who we want to be with. And this comes back to our main focus point for this discussion because if someone you are dating doesn't like that idea, meaning they want you to show how much you love them by how miserable you get about them, that don't you want to know that as soon as possible? Don't you want to know that that's their point of view and that they might not want to change that point of view early? You don't want to know that after you've been dating them a year, right? Because now, if you get out, you've now spent a year of your life on this. Now, it's still worth getting out if you realize it isn't for you. But do, you, do we want to spend our year that way? I, I was just talking to a group earlier about this today, which I was saying, the amount of life that we use or that we sort of shorten our lives because we smoke cigarettes or eat really unhealthy or high fat foods or don't exercise or work at a nuclear power plant or whatever, the amount of time taken away from our lives by doing that, I really believe is less than the amount of time in our lives we spend dating people that are not for us specifically because of things that are completely within our control. The amount of time we spend dating people, spending, making that first impression, right? That Think about how important that first impression is, right? We want the person to like us. We want them to think we're great. We want them to want to be with us, right? So the amount of time that we spend laying down that groundwork and, and, and trying to put our best foot forward is, year, for most of us, years and years and years and years and years of our life, right? That's a long time. We're spending a long time on that. All right? So, this we might want to reevaluate. I think the amount of years you get back by trying to find out as quickly as possible if this person is for you and if they're not for you to get out, it's, it's incredible. I mean, the, the amount of your life you will get back from this is, is shocking. One of the chief reasons to discuss this issue is to create the relationship of your dreams, right? But the other reason is just purely for time-saving reasons. Purely. If you want to listen to this and, and, and participate in this for no other reason than to save years and years of your life, that's a good enough reason. I tell you, that is a good enough reason. Because you are going to get an enormous amount of time by getting out early. Right? One of the things that's uh, important to think about with this is, is an idea that a lot of people have trouble with, which is this. Get rejected as quickly as possible. Do whatever you can to get rejected as quickly as possible. Now, you hear that? Now I know, some of you might think, well, that's stupid. I don't want to do that. That's ridiculous. What does that mean, right? I'm going to, gonna, you know, I'm going to start acting crazy at the table. I'm going to start uh, wiping my nose on my date's shirt. You know, just to... I'm not talking about do things to... In, to attempt to drive the person away, right? We're talking about this. When you're in that early, early stage, the first date, the second date, or even the first year of the relationship, you want to focus so much, not on, on making an impression, but you want to focus so much on being so yourself, right? being so yourself, that you want that person to reject you as quickly as possible if you're not for them. If, 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 if you're not the kind of person they really want, what are you trying to delay that for? Right? <laughs> Hello, right? We all, I mean, so many of us do this, right? We're trying to delay the onset. Look, I don't want them to find out what a total jerk I am, right? what a total beefcake I am, because then they're not going to like me. But here's the thing. If you're really silly or really late or you really like talking about the anatomy of rats or whatever... You want that person to know ASAP. Right, for those of you uh, people not from the United States, ASAP stands for as soon as possible. Uh, right. Okay, so you want to know that ASAP. right? Because if they don't like that and they don't want to date someone or be with someone who's into what you're into or is the kind of person that you are, you want them to get out. And, and by the way, you partly want them to get out because hopefully you'd want them to find someone that's for them. But mostly, you want them to get out because you don't want to spend any more of your time on that. Right? Why would you want to spend more time building more of a relationship with someone who doesn't actually want to be with someone like you? Right? And here's the other side of the question. 
Do you want to spend the time building a relationship and dating someone who isn't the person that you really want to be with? Right? Do you want to spend that time dating someone who isn't really the person that you want to be with? That's the question to really think about. Because the imposter game works both ways. Okay? Most people who start dating, they're both used to playing this game. This game of everyone puts the best foot forward, they do and say the best they can to try and get the other person interested in, in them. Now, the cool thing, and, and I've seen this in practice, I've had this happen in my own life, is when you stop playing the game, you give the other person permission to stop playing too. Now really, they have permission to stop playing without you giving it to them. Obviously, you don't have to give them the permission. But you, by, oftentimes, they don't give themselves the permission. So by you saying, basically, I'm going to step out of this game, I'm going to be so authentic with you. I'm going to be so honest with you. I'm going to be so myself with you that I want you to know there's an open door for you to do that. Now, can you guarantee the other person then not going to be an imposter? Of course you can't. Right? Like, like we're saying, you're not God. You can't control what a person thinks and does. But again, you can give them every opportunity and every opening to do that. And I am telling you, when you give people this opening, some people won't like it, which you want to know that soon too, right? If they don't like authenticity, you want them Audi. Audi 5000, you know what I'm saying? You want them out. But if they do, and most people crave this, most people really want this. If they really want this, when you start swinging open those doors, they are going to be grateful. They're going to be happy. They're going to be so psyched. Right? They're going to they're gonna have been thrilled that someone else actually wants to stop playing the game and is willing to communicate honestly with them. I've specifically had this happen. I remember dating someone a few years back. And we, right in that, in that first time of us going out, it was actually, it was, we had met someplace, we made a date, and we were going to have our first official date. And actually on the phone, I said to the person, listen, I know we're both, playing this game we, we're trying to impress each other but listen can we can we just like start over and just be completely upfront right now so that we know number one we're building a relationship based on honesty and number two we both know if we're not for each other wouldn't that be like refreshing and I didn't know how she was going to react actually I really at the time I really liked her I really wanted things to work out but I wanted more to have an honest relationship and I wanted even more to be with her only if she was going to be good for me and I was going to be good for her uh, so anyway, she was thrilled. She was so psyched about it. She was like, yes, that sounds great. Let's do that. And you know what? That's exactly what we did. And uh, you know how long the relationship lasted? Two dates. Sweet. And you might think that's a bad thing. I was thrilled. Right? And I actually think she was thrilled too. Because we got, we took what could have taken months and we shortened it to two dates. How luscious is that? Right? You're, you're saving all kinds of time. If you have a busy schedule... I mean, this is what you want to do. You're going to save crazy amounts of time. And what you're also going to do is every time someone rejects you or you reject them, right, you are bringing yourself closer to the person that is actually going to be the best fit for you. Now, we can talk about this all day, but it's not going to change any of our behaviors unless we change the fundamental beliefs underneath all of this, right? So, for instance, if you still feel like you're not going to be complete without another person, not a darn word I said is going to make any bit of difference. Because you're going to do what all of us do. You're going to try and keep the person so that you can, make, you can feel good about yourself. Which I understand, and I've done that in my own life. But if you can really feel complete in yourself, you won't, you won't do this. And if you decide to change your priorities, and instead of prioritizing the person liking you, or having the relationship work out, and instead you prioritize being totally authentic and also getting someone who's really the right fit for you, you change those priorities, you're going to start to really change the way you feel and the way that you act. Also, this whole rejection thing, right? A lot of us are really afraid of it. I've definitely had times in my life where I've been petrified of getting rejected you know, by, by, by someone of the opposite sex who you know, I, I was thinking that would mean something terrible about me, right? Now, for all of us, it's really important to really consider this because are, are you making the rejection mean something about you? That's the question you want to ask. Am I making the rejection? Am I making this person saying, dude, I don't want you? 
All right, you, you, you're bald. Uh, your nose is, is bigger than I want. Uh, you know, you. Uh, what else? What else is? Uh, you. Uh, I don't like your ears. You know, I'm not into the whole thing. If that, if you see that as a blow to you, if I see that as a blow to me, you're up the creek before you even start. Because, again, you're going to do whatever it takes to not have that rejection. Of course you are, right? Again, it's not crazy that you do this. It's understandable. Because you don't want to have an experience that you're then going to use to feel terrible about yourself. So that is why it's so important to decide, okay, rejection tells me everything about this other person. And it tells me squadola about me. It don't tell me squat about me. You got a problem with that? Hey, I take rejection like I take my cups of coffee. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, here's the thing. If you really felt like rejection tell, told you everything about the other person and actually told you a lot about whether they were a match for you, but didn't tell you anything about how attractive you were, how funny you were, how interesting you were, how smart you were, you would be golden. Right? Because then, you'd be in this position where you were actually, in a sense, seeking out rejection if there was any hint that the person wasn't for you. And there, there's incredible, incredible benefits from that. Um, I, it's amazing because we, we, we have, uh, you know, for those of you who have been here, you know this, but for those of you who haven't, we have a course called Radical Authenticity that's all about uh, authentic communication. And the whole, imagine this, five days, Monday through Friday, focused on uh, getting so comfortable being authentic. Seeing being authentic is the safest way to fly. Right? Wouldn't that be amazing if you saw authenticity as the safest way to fly instead of the most dangerous and scary thing? It, it's amazing what people do with this, um, with this, power once once they once they really decide to to use it and to focus on it being authentic is incredible and you know we, we we talk about this a lot when people go to radical authenticity because people are being challenged to very upfront rock and roll in your face course people are being challenged to really share the truth in themselves in terms of who they really are right we spend our whole lives squeezing the bigness of who we are into a little thimble sized container right this week actually starts to reverse that process and grow that little thimble into a giant room-sized version of you. Right? But the most important reason to do this is to create meaningful relationships. We don't teach radical authenticity because authenticity is the right way to live. It's the moral way to live. Right? We're not trying to tell you it's immoral to lie and it's terrible and we're not trying to beat you up about it. We're trying to say that, look, listen, we want to show you how to do this because when you are authentic, you create the most meaningful relationships. Relationships where you don't have to hide, relationships where there's mutual trust, and relationships where you're with the person and they're with you solely because you are each who each other wants and not for any other reason. Isn't that amazing? I wish that were the, don the, the definition of romance, right? Instead of romance being about how sad I am when you're not with me, Right? And the, the drama of it. I wish the definition of romance is someone's with me for me and someone's choosing to love me. They're not loving me because it's out of their control. They're choosing to love me because I'm, I'm what they want and I'm choosing to love them because they're what I want. And that's romance. I, I don't know. For me, that for me that gets me excited. I, I like that. I get really thrilled about that because I think that, that there's, there's real excitement to a relationship based on, on that kind of connection.